Ever seen a hippo at your dentist office? Probably not, but they do enjoy a good teeth cleaning. Who doesn't look in the mirror after a good brush and give a happy toothy grin, even if we're just seeing if we missed a spot? Our teeth, like every animal's teeth, are like our fingerprint and uniquely our own. Even identical twins don't have identical teeth. And speaking of unique teeth, our animal friends are no exception when it comes to their chompers. Here are the 15 strangest teeth in the animal kingdom. Number 15. Crab Eater Seal Teeth Check out these chompers. The scientific name for the crab eater seal, Labadon carcinophaga, translates to lobed tooth crab eater. And one look at its mouth tells you why. This thing's so toothy, its teeth have teeth. And for good reason, the mouth of a crab eater seal is uniquely adapted to feed on Antarctic krill by acting like a sieve. A hungry crab eater will take a mouthful of water, close its jaws, squeeze the water out through its teeth and filter out all the krill, which it then consumes. These microscopic krill comprise over 90% of the crab eater seal's diet. Despite its name, the crab eater seal does not actually feed on crabs. For a better perspective, the same thing that sustains 100,000 of crab eater seals also sustains the 100 foot long blue whales. Surprised? Don't be. With an estimated biomass of 500 million tons, Antarctic krill are, by some estimates, the most abundant animal species on Earth. This is a uh, crab eater skull from the Antarctic. These guys eat krill, shrimp-like organisms. The high abundance of the crab eater seals is a testament to their extreme success in killing Antarctic krill. But it's a nightmare to floss. Before we move on, if you don't smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell today, it, the clown, will appear under your bed tonight. Number 14, Leatherback Sea Turtle Teeth. This next creature's mouth is literally a nightmare. The esophagus of a leatherback sea turtle was lined with papilla, sharp, keratinized prongs that enable the turtle to dine on jellyfish. These prongs are made of cartilage and line the throat of the turtle to grip onto the jellyfish dinner so it doesn't slip back out as the turtle uses the muscles in its throat to expel excess salt water. The papillae also protect the leatherback from the stinging of the jellyfish. As you can imagine, the jellyfish don't go down without a fight. So these cartilaginous prongs keep the turtle from being injured by its prey. Now, leatherbacks travel vast distances and require a lot of energy to make these migrations possible, but jellyfish are primarily water. A little protein, some vitamins and some minerals, and some fat. So how on earth can a leatherback fuel its body with them? Well, they actually have an extremely long esophagus that leads from the mouth to the rear of their body, and then it loops on the side again until it reaches the stomach. This long esophagus acts as a holding pouch so that the leatherback can continually digest its food as parts of its meal leave the stomach digested. New jellyfish are being pushed into the stomach. Kinda gross, but hey, it's the hard facts, peeps. Number 13. Human Teeth Squid don't let the scary appearance of the Pramacatuthis sulcus frighten you. For those fearful of such creatures, one fact stands out. This terrifying looking denizen of the deep remains a physically tiny creature, an inch or too long, and represents the rarest known species of squid on earth. That's because the unique individual featured here remains the only specimen that was ever found. Therefore, extremely little definitive information exists concerning the little squid with the weird teeth. They're not actually teeth at all, rather they represent lips folded over the razor sharp beak. The structures that look like teeth are just circular folded lips. Scientists used to believe a squid's sucker teeth were made from a hard material called chitin, but that's not true. The teeth also are not made from minerals like calcium, which give human teeth their strength. Instead, the squid's ring teeth contain proteins and only proteins. That's exciting. According to science, it means that a super strong material can be made using just proteins, no other minerals required. And unlike silks, such as those proteins made by spiders or cocoon making insects, the squid stuff forms underwater. That means squid inspired materials might be useful to scientific advancement in other areas. Number 12. Narwhal Teeth Fuja, narwhals have no teeth even though they eat large fish. If you look in its mouth, there's nothing. 
there are absolutely no teeth. Incredibly, the narwhal's only visible tooth is outside of its mouth. Its tusk, in fact, is a giant canine tooth that can grow as long as nine feet with a distinct left-hand spiral covered in a tissue called cementum, normally only found around the base of a tooth lodged in bone. The unicorns of the sea, the tusks have sensory capability and up to 10 million nerve endings inside. The long spiral tusk of the male narwhal is one of the pair of canine teeth positioned horizontally in the animal's skull. They determined it was a canine and not an incisor because the tusk originates in the narwhal's maxillary bone, where canine teeth in mammals originate. In most mammals, canines are vertical in the mouth and are used for holding food or as weapons. It is the narwhal's left tooth of the pair that grows into a long tusk that erupts through the whale's upper lip. The right canine tooth is also a tusk, but it remains embedded in the narwhal's skull. Only occasionally do both tusks erupt. Female narwhals have two embedded tusks that erupt only very rarely. Is tusk envy a thing? Number 11. The Moray Eel You definitely do not want to swim too close to this next sea creature, the Moray Eel. Not only do they bite, but they're really, really good at it. They have two sets of jaws that are each lined with sharp teeth and moray eels' mouths have muscles that are more like bungee jumping cords, giving them the special ability to sling their jaws forward and backward. And their teeth are sharp and curved, helping them hold on to large prey, other fish, octopods, squids, and crabs. The teeth are built to hang on tight for a long time. Why would moray eels need such a mobile and slightly creepy pharyngeal jaw? The arrangement of protractor and retractor muscles in the throat jaws allow a moray to transport large prey into its long esophagus. A moray eel's jaw shoots forward during feeding and then pulls back for swallowing. This feeding adaption is vital for moray eels as they live in narrow burrows and rock crevices or caves in sandy habitats. Around coral reefs, moray eels can be seen poking their heads out to snatch passing prey and then retreating into their burrows. While other fish suck in prey, literally expanding their mouths and throats to generate an inward suction force, moray eels typically do not have space to expand. Their teeth and jaws do all the work. Number 10. The Parrotfish Parrotfish are very cool indeed, but parrotfish teeth are the coolest biominerals of all. They are the stiffest among the hardest and the most resistant to fracture or abrasion ever measured. After all, they eat coral, which is extremely tough. Researchers discovered that parrotfish teeth owe their hardness not only to the material they're made from, but also to its nanoscale structure, which they liken to chain mail. The researchers used a technique known as PIC, Polarization Dependent Imaging Contrast, mapping using an X-ray source known as a synchrotron light source. The technology allows scientists to observe the nanoscale crystal structures, the mineral that makes up parrotfish teeth, which contains calcium, fluorine, phosphorus, and oxygen. The crystals are, in fact, interwoven to create structures with immense hardness. Parrotfish chew on coral all day, eating not only the hard calcium carbonate skeleton, but the soft-bodied organisms called polyps that cover the skeleton and the algae that live inside them and provide the coral with energy, as well as bacteria living inside the coral skeleton. When parrotfish poop out the coral they eat, the soft tissues are absorbed and what remains comes out as sand, a lot of sand. In a year, one large parrotfish can produce 1,000 pounds of sand, the weight of a baby grand piano. Number 9. Naked Mole Rat in bad lighting, a naked mole rat looks like a wrinkly sausage with oversized teeth, and given that it spends all of its extraordinary long life short of air in dark and overcrowded underground tunnels, where it frequently eats its own excrement, an unflattering light is probably the best that a naked mole rat could hope for. Naked mole rats are subterranean rodents that utilize their super strong incisors for feeding, digging complex tunnel systems, social interactions, and self-defense. Apparently, studies have shown that naked mole rats have morphological and anatomical adaptions specifically for strong bites. Why not test that out? In comparing bite force with 82 additional mammals, naked mole rats exhibited a bite that was 65% stronger 
than predicted for their body size and exceeding bite force values for all the animals that were studied, all thanks to those mega incisors. And let's not forget, their teeth can operate independently. A naked mole rat can move each of its front teeth separately like a pair of chopsticks. Another weird naked mole rat fact, they don't drink water. They get all of their hydration they need from their plant-based diet. Mole rats eat the underground parts of plants. They typically only consume part of the root, leaving enough behind for it to survive and provide another meal. Oh, so kind and responsible. Number 8. The Sheep's Head Fish You never know what you're going to find walking along the beach. Like this, the remains of a sheep's head fish, known for its several rows of human-like teeth used to crack and crush shellfish, were found by a family on St. Simon's Island in Georgia. Malia Burrow snapped a photo of the fish while walking along the beach with her three-year-old. I originally just thought it was a plain old fish, nothing exciting, she said in an interview. Then as we got closer, I saw all the teeth. How did the sheep's head get its name, you might ask? Maybe it relates to the sheep-like silhouette, as some have suggested. But there's no denying the sheep's head's teeth look very much like human teeth. A fully grown adult will have well-defined, aka buck-toothed incisors at the front of the jaw and three rows of molars in the upper and lower jaw. The strong, heavy grinders set in the rear of the jaw are great at crushing the shells of its prey, like clams, oysters, barnacles, or delicious fiddler crabs. The sheep's head, or the fish with the human teeth, prefers coastal habitats around rock pilings, jetties, mangroves, reefs, and piers. Ah, uh, look at those teeth. He wants to get a piece on you. <laughs> Sheep's head fish are a common North American marine species that swim from Cape Cod in Massachusetts through to Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, even as far as Brazil. Number 7. Nutria A semi-aquatic animal native to South America, the nutria, also known as the river rat, found their way into Louisiana marshes beginning in the 1930s after escaping from fur farms set up to turn their glossy brown pelts into hats and muffs. But it's the teeth that get all the attention. They are equipped with a total of 20 teeth, which are molars, premolars, canines, and incisors. Their wide incisors never stop growing as long as they live. Their dentist bill must be out of control. Not only are Nutria's teeth an intense orange, they also jut forward prominently. But the orange coloration in their teeth is not random. The coloring is caused by their enamel, which includes a pigment that consists of the mineral iron. The iron in it gives the teeth a tougher and firmer texture, which enables the smoother portions in the back to grind down more rapidly. All of this ends up giving the teeth a chisel-like form that helps them greatly with gnawing. Nutria's gnarly teeth function as habitat-destroying machines, eating the majority of marsh plants, they don't discriminate, at both root and stem. When Nutria gnaw through the wetland's vegetative root system that holds the delicate ecosystem in place, they create permanent flooded ponds known as eatouts and wreck the habitat for any additional wildlife and residents. Not cool, guys. Number 6. Dragonfish the deep sea dragonfish is a vicious predator that swims the deep, dark oceans of the world up to 5,000 feet below, but mainly in the north and western Atlantic Ocean. And even though it's barely four inches long, its teeth are stronger than a piranha's. The thin, jagged teeth are made of nanoscale-sized crystal particles, making the dragonfish's fangs transparent and tougher than the teeth of its fiercest fish predators. Wouldn't you just love to see it open a bottle of beer? Just kidding. Naturally, this has marine biologists and material scientists super pumped. Can dragonfish teeth science help lead to new synthetic materials that are both strong and see-through? They seem to think so. Mind blown. Even better, dragonfish can produce light. It also has a long barbell attached to its chin. This barbell is tipped with a light-producing photophore, kind of like a fishing lure. By flashing it on and off and waving it back and forth, the dragonfish might attract the attention of its potential meal. Once an unsuspecting fish gets too close, chomp! The dragonfish's powerful jaws make mincemeat out of any fish. Dinner has been served. Number 5. Star-Nosed Mole This cute little fella is the star-nosed mole. 
despite looking like something out of a science fiction movie. The Moe's weird snout actually plays a vital role in its survival. The star-nosed Moe has a modified front teeth that form the equivalent of a pair of tweezers that are used to pluck tiny prey from the ground. Hidden within its unique mouth organ are over 100,000 nerve fibers. That's five times more than the amount found on the human hand, all contained within a space no bigger than your fingertip. This mole can locate, identify, and devour its food in a mere 227 milliseconds. That's super fast. There are several body features that make this feat possible, and the moles have heavily clawed arms that allow them to quickly dig through the soily habitats of their prey. Once they've uncovered their next meal, their unusual tweezer-shaped teeth specialize in snapping up the small creatures. Whenever its nose touches soil, a mental image is created, allowing the mole to piece together a picture of where he is. Because the mole's eyes are pretty well useless, it relies on its nerve-filled appendages to navigate the world around it. The star-nosed mole's most important feature is its sense of touch. Through studying these creatures, researchers have identified genes that may control touch and pain. Further research could result in the development of much-needed drugs and therapies to treat chronic pain. Number 4. The Tufted Deer this strange yet adorable creature is the tufted deer. They're like the vampires of the deer world, except they don't drink blood. As you may have noticed, these deer have large fang-like canines, and in males, they can get to be up to an inch long. While your average deer will use their antlers to defend their territory and win females, the tufted deer uses its canines to fight and defend itself instead. They're named for the tuft of reddish hair that grows on their foreheads. Males have super cute little antlers that barely poke through this interesting hairstyle. And they're small for deer standards, only reaching 20 to 28 inches in height and maybe 4 feet in length. What they lack in size, they make up for in demeanor. When feeling threatened, the tufted deer will let out a loud bark before running away in a wild pattern that makes it difficult for a predator to follow it. You'd think one look at those huge fangs would be enough to stop any hungry threat in its tracks. The tufted deer are solitary animals, although they occasionally travel in pairs that migrate in fixed routes throughout their territory. Because they're found in mountainous, high, damp forests at 1,600 to 14,800 feet above sea level, they really haven't been studied all too well. What a shame. They're so cute. Number 3. Kandairu Speaking of vampires, this tiny catfish is a real bloodsucker. The parasitic Kandairu fish is famous for finding its way into the orifices of unsuspecting bathers and seems to feed exclusively on the blood of its victims. The fish has two hook-shaped teeth at the back of its mouth and an unusually flexible jawbone. At night, it lodges itself into the orifices of larger animals, usually the gills of other fish, buries its teeth into their flesh, and sucks out blood. Gee, thanks. But these fish do not hunt in packs like the piranha, nor are they exceptionally large like the anaconda. In fact, the kandairu is among the tiniest vertebrates on the planet, and it's sometimes referred to as the toothpick fish due to its small size and slender shape. Only a handful of people have had the misfortune of crossing paths with this fish. But luckily, though it is a parasite, humans are not among its viable hosts. But if you live underwater, it lingers in the murky darkness at the river's bottom quietly stalking its neighbors. Light is scarce in the deep, and the Kandairu does not need it to see. It can taste the traces of urea and ammonia that are expelled from breathing gills. So look out, this bloodsucker could be feasting on you right now. Well, maybe not you, but the thought did cross your mind. Number 2. Hippo At the Tenoji Zoo in Osaka, Japan, hippo hygiene is important. Thanks to training and consistent routines, the hippopotamus understands how to get his teeth brushed and get a quick physical checkup from the careful zookeeper, a hippo tooth brushing professional. In nature, cleaning symbiosis helps a hippo's 40 chompers stay relatively well cared for thanks to the feeding habits of fish and birds. A hippo's self-sharpening teeth grow throughout the hippo's life, some reaching up to 19 inches in length and used for fighting and for shearing off plants close to the ground. The hippo uses its molars, located in the back of the mouth, to grind these foods. The molars are crucial to consuming the diet. A hippo whose molars are too worn will starve. The 88 pounds or so of grass the animal can consume every night. The hippopotamus, a semi-aquatic mammal native to Africa, eats mostly grasses and other vegetation. 
but occasionally scavenges for meat. As the teeth don't yellow over time, such hippo ivory is popular with poachers and used to be made into dentures, most famously for US President George Washington. Now that's just plain wacky. Number 1. Goosander Tooth Duck Last but not least, the Goosander Tooth Duck. They are a duck belonging to the sawbill family after their long, narrow bills with saw-like teeth which are excellent at gripping fish. The Welsh name for goosander literally translates to serrated duck because of their insane teeth. They first colonized Scotland in 1871 and have since spread across the entire UK and formed into flocks of several thousand or more in some parts of Europe. The drake or male goosander has a dark green head, a black back, and the rest of his body is bright white, sometimes with a pinkish glow. The female pictured here is gray with a quite vibrant gingery brown head and a white throat. Both sexes have a long, narrow red bill with a hook at the tip. After the breeding period, almost all males disappear. It was a mystery as to where they went for many years, but it's now known that the males leave the females in late June and migrate to one specific fjord, Tanafjord in Norway, where they undergo a full molt of their flight feathers, which takes them around three months. They remain there until the freezing weather approaches and they then return back from late October onwards with larger numbers appearing back in December. The females stay and relax. Let the fellas do all the work. You don't mess around with a duck that has serrated teeth. That was the 15 strangest teeth in the animal kingdom. Thanks for watching.